So, it's actually been a while since I've actually taken a look at a concept killer for Dead by Daylight. And I thought with the Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming out just the other day on Wednesday, I thought it'd be a good time to look at the Five Nights at Freddy's gameplay concept. So let's hop into it. Already looking at, I want to say a scrap trap, or is it a spring trap? No, it's spring trap. I already want to say that just looking at the actual model, I do like it. And I don't know if they are they going to show. Yeah, they're going to show the abilities in a moment. Having like an axe. Seems quite cool, but it reminds me a lot of Huntress, currently. Like, she has hatchets that she throws, but he has an axe that he has as his M1, I believe. From the looks of things. Teachable perks. Has three is the same as always. He's a tall character. 32 meters and his movement speed is 4.6 meters per second. Am I reading that right? Not sure I am. So we have backstage horrors. Uh, let's upgrade the. Let's put that on 720. So we have even with the curtains called back. Oh, stage fright sets in. Whenever a survivor sees your aura, they scream and have their own aura revealed to you for four seconds. They also suffer from oblivious status effect for 30 seconds. And it also upgrades uh, backstage horrors cooldown as the upgrades it gets less. Okay. That also seems like quite a good perk. I have to say, Backstage Horrors seems like quite a good perk. Because I don't know if it's just recently a lot of people have been running it, but there's a... I can't think what the, the Survivor perk's called. But it's the one where like, if you're on hook, you see the aura of the killer around that hooked person. And that would work out quite well. And if a Survivor has that, this perk would work quite well. But it's, it, get, it might be quite a situational perk, I think. Grim celebration. Anything it can be caught can be cause for celebration, especially if you get away with it all. Hook a survivor grants you undetectable status for six seconds. The duration is extended by an additional one or oh, up to two seconds for each survivor hooked by your hand in this trial. I don't know if I'm misunderstanding this, but does that only only count for um, how many people are hooked at one time? Or is it for each person hooked within that trial? So yeah, I think I'm misunderstanding that. It might just be a one time. And you've got cruel me machinations. Activates for 60 seconds after hooking a survivor. Manually damage a generator calls uh, man manually damaging a generator calls upon the entity to block that generator for as long as cruel machinations is active. So it activates for 60 seconds after hooking. And say after 20 seconds, you hook another survivor. That extends that, doesn't pretty much. That would be quite strong. That would be quite a strong perk to have. 
if I'm working it out right. So you have the 60 seconds after you hook someone, so you have 6 seconds that gen's blocked for or damaging a generator block set. So you could block the most done generator and then after 20 seconds of that generator being blocked, you could hook another person, if I'm working this out right, and damage another generator, which will then block that one. But the question is, is it able to block two generators at, two, at the same time? If let's say you hook someone 20 seconds, like let's say 30 seconds apart, should we say, so it definitely gets outside of the 20 second cooldown. That's quite, I want to say it might be quite a strong perk. And he's got Phantom Trespasser. Your familiarity with the secret back rooms and lo long lost locations has caught the attention of the entity and thus grants you the freedom of finding more of them within its own realm. Phantom Trespasser. Press and hold the power button. Oh, uh, yeah, power button to enter Trespasser mode. Press and hold again to emerge as you emerge from trespasser mode you unleash an intense screech alerting all survivors of your presence uh, while in trespasser mode you are incomprehensible you are an incomprehensible incompre phantom unable to attack and barely recognizable from 16 meters or further so basically wraith his ability reminds me of Wraith currently. You also produce a non-directional phantom radius for 40, 40 meters. Phantom radius. What does it mean by phantom radius? I will also drop the video in the description below as well. And you have special attack phantom assault as you emerge your, as you finish emerging you may press the attack button if you do so you lunge forward with a sudden speed and a powerful swing to brutally slay any victim in your path putting the survivor into a dying state if you hit a dropped pallet and or breakable wall they instantly break the same applies to generators causing them to instantly regress upon impact so technically you could have survivors on a generator you can go into phantom trespasser get near that generator they could nearly have it done and you could come out of your power instantly hit that generator without technically going into the animation of breaking the generator or damaging the generator and it instantly regresses that's quite cool and special ability, ability, desolate hope. Uh, press the active ability button while in trespasser mode to reveal agony trails in the air within 10 meters as long as you remain in trespasser mode, showing the paths recently traveled by survivors for 20 seconds. Ah, desolate hope activation creates an audio cue for survivors that could be quite cool i'd love to i want i'm gonna definitely want to see that in action he then has his stuff you also have other weapons Ooh. one of the other weapons he has oh so you have burn trap that's an outfit, and the outfit Burn Trap has gives him a security bot head on a. Ooh, it's quite cool. And then it jumps to the Survivor, which I actually want to have a look at the Survivor because I do play a lot of Survivor these days, which we are getting would be getting Michael Afton. This person would put them down for, which, to be honest, does look quite cool. Security guard, of course. Because if I've got it right, Michael Afton is the security guard in the first. 
the first one, I believe. What's his perks? You get his backstory, as you do. And you've got moving on. Your exposure to the line between life and death makes the feeling of it somehow less discomforting. After being unhooked, unhooking yourself, or fully recovering from a, the dying state, moving on is activated. While active, you don't leave scratch marks from running and don't create loud noise notifications for the killer from rust actions. That would be quite a strong, strong one as well. Because it's, it's, it's a little bit like off the record, which you make no noise, no scratch marks, I think it is as well. But that only applies to you being injured and moaning and your scratch marks, whereas this does it for rushed actions on top. But it doesn't take away the sound of you being injured moaning. So it could be quite a good swap. And then you have hollow sensation. Familiarity with the sensations of suffering become, oh, comes with its advantages. When injured, you gain a 3% haste status effect. This further increases by an additional 0.5 for each negative status effect you currently have. So technically, this perk would help if let's say the killer uses, I believe it's pain, pain resonance hooks, that puts a debuff on you. Like, that could actually work quite well to combat that. Why, why have DBD not put a perk in like that? Witness the truth. Whenever another survivor is injured by a non-basic attack, you see the killer's aura for four seconds and gain a token to the maximum of five when it's maxed out. Whenever you are put into a dying state, you consume all your tokens and reveal the killer's aura for two seconds and all survivors for each token lost this way. Mm. Something tells me I don't feel like that would be a great perk. It could be good, but I don't feel like it would be amazing. Oh, no, no, no. You consume all and then reveal the killer's aura to all survivors for each one. That's why there's five. So you'd see it and the other four survivors would see it as, or other three survivors would see it as well. Now let's get ourselves some gameplay and see where this goes. Because they've done this video differently to the others. Normally there's an over, there's a talk over. Corfawn Valley. Yay. A bit bright for DBD. I say that, but then we've got the um, leather face maps. I love the name of the um, of the survivors. So he's just gone into into is it trespasser mode? And he's using the free perks, okay. Ah, so that's Desolate Hope. So he's able to see where survivors have just gone. I just want to see that again. So he uses Desolate Hope to 
to see their location, to follow it. The floor deck probably should have run by them. But he, he then instantly comes out of it, and because he's so close, gets her. And because he sees the aura, because it was a non-basic attack, he screams because of Springtrap's ability, or well, ability, perk. And then he also gains a um, to token for it. I w I'm going to say, I'm a bit confused why he hasn't hooked the claw there. Like, he's knocked the claw there down. Oh. Oh, so that's what he looks like when up close. And in his ability. Okay. He can instantly break the pallet using his ability. Okay, makes sense. Let's jump forward a little bit. The map is looking a little bit weird to me. But then that could just be it. Dwight. <laughs> I'm just gonna question it, Dwight. But I feel like if you've gone near a generator that is being done when you're spring trap and you're in your power, Desolate Hope is your way to find them. Which could be a little bit broken, reasonably. But at the same time, it could be quite a fun killer to go against. Because they're going to almost know your every move. I'd also like to hope there's a little bit of a cooldown between you using Desolate Hope. Which that probably would be. Does he get William? No, what does he get Michael, I mean? Oh, 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 is this the Mori? Now that's a little bit gruesome for... I say a little bit gruesome. We have got, like, Clown who cuts off their pinky fingers and all that sort of stuff. But that is the end of this video. I will drop a link down below if you want to check out the entire video yourself. And also the uh, socials and everything for this guy. And all that sort of stuff. But for now, I think I'm for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, and do you want to see more of me checking out these killers? Because we are getting a new killer revealed in the next couple of days of when this video goes out and that sort of stuff. Then drop a like down below, subscribe for more. But for now, thanks for watching and see everyone next time.